practical introduction to polar codes. So in the last two parts, we were discussing about uh, some very fundamentals of polar codes. Uh, so what polar codes have inside them and then uh, we saw the basic construction of polar codes in this part in the in in this part and the next part we are going to see the actual critical parts of polar codes namely the encoding and decoding so in the construction part we have decided some certain parameter which is going to be used in these two blocks so these are the three blocks and we are going to see encoding now so um, just some notation trust me this is not very uh, difficult so this is there are just three parameters n k and i n k you must be already very familiar n is the block length the after adding the redundancy uh, k is the message length so and what is this i script i script i is denotes a set the it is directly related to the set that we decided in the construction phase we have decided some set j in the construction phase just take all those indices apply the bit reversal operation on each index and form a new set i it's this set is called information bit indices and the complementary set is called frozen bit indices that as simple as that what is this bit reversal in, uh, operation bit reversal operation is simply take the binary representation of a given integer index uh, in n bits because uh, uh, every index is going to be less than or equal to 2 per small n therefore uh, n bits is sufficient to represent every index just take every index represent in binary form reverse the order of uh, just reverse this order of uh, in, uh, binary numbers and then get the new integer and take that integer into the set script i script i so uh, that's all that's all so uh, another kernel binary kernel that we are going to critically use in this encoding process is this kernel which is often called as arikan's kernel sometimes and is also very well known kernel um, so this kernel is triangular and we are going to apply several kronecker uh, operations kronecker product operations as a result the the matrix dimensions increase then it gets doubled every iteration so we start with a 2 by 2 size and then it grows to 4 by 4 size and then now it is 8 by 8 size and so on so th the dimensions grow as a power of small n so we are going to use this in the encoding process as you see very soon so what is encoding encoding is as simple as using the uh, using the kernel to multiply a vector and get the encoded vector this is very similar to the traditional encoding step where you multiply the k message bits directly with a generator matrix and get your uh, encoded uh, uh, message vector where the redundancy added and you have n bits in this stage because we have only k bits in the initial uh, to start with we st we have k bits and we have converted them into small capital n number of uh, uh, bits uh, but here if you see d is not message directly but rather message is embedded inside d and this is not a generator matrix it contains generator matrix as you are going to see very soon so how d is formed it is very simple take the information bit indices embed embed your message inside that and then rest of the bits just simply freeze them force zeros at those indices so this message is going to vary based on what you are going to transmit but this is always zero in as a result what you are going to see is something very similar to the matrix multiplication with a rectangular matrix because this is k bits and this is n bits this is k bits and this is n bits um, we are supposed to uh, multiply with a rectangular matrix essentially that is also embedded in this equation in an interesting fashion so uh, just take an example n is 8 k is 5 and then uh, uh, information uh, bit indices set is this phi index uh, phi indices what we are essentially doing is this matrix multiplication because the kernel after doing three kronecker products becomes this becomes this big matrix of 8 8 uh, by 8 size uh, what we are doing is forcing some of them to zeros these are frozen bit indices the complementary information bit indices set so in the remaining bit indices we have some data but these the r these zeros are forced as a result these columns are removed in effect so we are essentially using only some of the columns only some of these columns to transmit our information so we actually have uh, an equations very similar to the uh, uh, very similar to the original uh, uh, traditional or classic uh, form of uh, linear encoding so it's not very diff different from that in that sense 
only thing is how do you implement this particular uh, equation because it is matrix multiplication usually quad uh, matrix multiplication is of quadratic complexity uh, which will be which will which may not be as uh, uh, implementation friendly as a linear co as a lesser complexity implementations and since we are talking about polar codes which are asymptotically good we are supposed to use higher block lengths and at those block lengths quality complexity is not so friendly so we are supposed to go, go to higher uh, more efficient implementations and luckily we do have one so in fact it reduces order of n square implementation to a very menial order of n log n implementation so what is this efficient implementation this is simply this butterfly circuit where there are several XOR operations being performed on the given D D is being going to be converted into X okay that should be very straightforward once you uh, okay if it is not so straightforward I'll show you one small thing so if you consider this block this block is going to implement one Kronecker pro one kernel. So as a result, what you're going to see is f times uh, f times whatever input that is going to come in. And this is another f, and this is another f, and this is another f. And this this XR, if you take, this is a slightly stretched, but it is also another f and so on so by cascading in an intelligent fashion several small f's we are going to essentially implement the n fold Kronecker product in an efficiently computable fashion so there is some notation that you can use so there are several stages smaller number of stages will be there in general uh, so because uh, this is uh, n equals to 2 power 3 there are three stages there are three stages and the uh, every stretched circuit can be represented with these terms uh, which I use often so lower branch upper branch and a connection so that's how it goes so yeah this is a pretty efficient implementation you can write a MATLAB code with a reasonable understanding of the circuit or you can use our MATLAB code so we have provided whatever code that we have given uh, what we have uh, provided some very efficient implementation over there so just download that stuff and use a simple function p encode so u is a message of k bits and simply by calling p encode function it is going to use x so one important thing is the function init pc which performs the construction of polar code should have been already called as i was explaining in the last part of the tutorial init pc should have been already called then only this function will work properly because the uh, indices the frozen bit indices has to be known prior to encoding uh, so uh, that is the usual encoding and there is an interesting thing here uh, there is an interesting version of encoding any linear block code uh, which is also very interesting for the practical implementations for several other reasons so that is called systematic polar uh, systematic encoding of uh, linear block codes in general uh, so if we can extend that systematic encoding to s polar codes it will be very interesting so that is uh, some interesting work that is done in this uh, second reference so as a result we have some very efficient uh, uh, in fact equally efficient encoding as the uh, non systematic versions which is already very efficient so we want in case you want a systematic version this should be as efficient as that so except for a uh, scalar factors we have uh, several a range of algorithms in this particular paper so that is they, they are also implemented in the MATLAB code that we have provided to you so as a result you have this simple function call this will implement whatever you want so just pass uh, if you use p encode function this will si non systematically encode the standard polar code this is the systematic variant of the polar encoder for uh, systematic variant of the polar code which will simply which will simply encode it in a systematic fashion uh, by the way systematic fashion systematic coding is nothing but uh, uh, when you uh, it 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 represents the entire encoding process as an appending process of redundancy so in general after doing the encoding you may not see the message bits as it is in the encoded bits though we uh, 
colloquially say that we redundancy being added or appended the redundancy is added in a very uh, uh, linear fashion within the uh, within the n bits that are being output but in case you can you can retain sustain the message bits as it is in the code word that is called systematic encoding that's why they are interesting uh, interested readers can read any standard text on coding theory that can help you understand systematic versions but this is just an add on so standard polar encoding is something sufficient from this two lines and that finishes the encoding part so we'll move on to decoder in the next uh, part of my tutorial thank you very much for watching keep watching my last part thank you